This is the first video in our series on invertebrate diversity. In this video, we'll move from the phylum periphera to the phylum annelida. In part two, we'll investigate the mollusk, and in part three, we'll take a closer look at the arthropods. And in part four, we'll have a quick overview of deuterostomes before beginning our series on chordates. In our introductory video, we built this classification tree to look at the diversity of animals. This series of videos will move us through the tree as we investigate each branch. So let's get started. Our first stop is down our branch where we find animals with no true tissues and no symmetry. Phylum periphera. An example would be sponges. Sponges are very simple animals with no true tissues. While we see that it can be a fairly large multicellular animal, there are no tissues organized in specialized uh, systems or organs. Um, they're, they lack symmetry uh, and there's no body cavity. Now if we look at a sponge up close, kind of a generalized sponge, we see that there is a central cavity, but that's not a body cavity. A body cavity by definition is a space between germ layers. And when we zoom into this area here and look at the sponge up close, we have an outer layer of cells uh, here uh, and an some cells floating around in the middle and then these specialized collar cells or choanocytes on the inside and these collar cells have a long whip-like flagella that they beat uh, to create a current and that current draws uh, water in and then that water moves across this net-like structure and it captures the small microscopic particles of food and each of these cells is feeding itself there's no digestive system uh, per se. And as we look at this very simple structure, we see that every cell basically has to fend for itself. In other words, there's no uh, digestive system. There's no circulatory system. If we look down here, there's no circulatory system, which means that each cell is on its own. There's no way to move materials from cell to cell in an efficient manner besides diffusion. Um, there's no nervous system in a sponge, so if you or poking the sponge over on this side, the cells way over here would have no way of knowing that the uh, sponge is being messed with. There's no cephalization, there's no head, logically, where would you put a head? There's no front or back. There's no segmentation. So we have here a very simple animal. Um, all of its metabolic waste can just diffuse out of the animal into the water and all the gas exchange also occurs by diffusion uh, in and out of these cells uh, as they contact with the water. We know that all animals are modal at some point and the sponges are no different. They have a free swimming larva stage but they're sessile as adults. Now let's move down this branch of the animals that have true tissues. We said that animals that have true tissues are then divided by how many tissue layers and the type of symmetry. So we'll go down this branch of the diploblastic or two germ layer animals that have radial symmetry that we're going to use to represent this branch are the cnidarians. Now there are other animals that represent this branch but we're going to use cnidarians as kind of the poster child for this whole branch. So what is a cnidarian? Well, jellyfish, hydra, coral, sea anemones, they're all examples of cnidarians. They're made of two germ layers, an endoderm and an ectoderm, with no mesoderm. Now they have a mesoglia, this jelly-like filling in between, but it's not true tissue. All of the cnidarians exhibit a radial symmetry. We can see it's kind of circular. So we have two germ layers and radial symmetry. That's the, the qualifiers for the branch that we're moving down. We do not have a body cavity, though we are going to have a cavity. Again, it's going to be a digestive cavity rather than a body cavity. We don't have a head. There's no front or back to this animal. There's no logical place to put a head because it's radial. But we do have our first nervous system, and this is an evolutionarily significant advancement. But it's, there's no brain. There's no centralized system. It's just like a net of nerves that if you threw a net over the top of this, uh, you have 
you know, kind of a net of fibers. But what it means is that if you poke the jellyfish on the side, cells on this side or part of this body can know that you're there and maybe it whips around these tentacles and stings you. This nervous system allows cells to communicate quickly over distances. Now moving on to the digestive system, in the Nidarians we have what's called a gastrovascular cavity which actually serves two purposes. Um, it is a digestive cavity but also is a delivery system, a vascular system so to say, because they do not have a circulatory system. But they don't need one. So if we look at this a little more closely, uh, for example let's say here, and I'll grab a pen, let's move this one over here. The jellyfish has a cavity inside of it like this and this is the opening to that digestive system and it brings food into the here where it gets digested but there's no other opening it's an incomplete digestive system only one opening we call that an incomplete system so that the waste have to come out the same opening we have two-way traffic but also notice that we don't need a circulatory system because there's no part of this body that's any great distance from this cavity so all these cells are being fed from the digestion of this cavity it's put out through the whole body so it's a gastro the gastro is the digestive part and the vascular for the vascular cavity is the delivery part in the Nidarians we have two basic body forms we have the polyp where uh, as a sessile version of and the medusa stage which is usually modal so you can think jellyfish for the medusa as it floats around and uh, maybe a sea anemone as a polyp it's sessile it stays uh, attached to the bottom here and it uses these tentacles to feed off the particles of, of food that come by uh, same as the jellyfish the specialized stinging cells that all Nidarians have are called pneumatocysts if you've ever been stung by a jellyfish, you know what those are. Now let's journey down this branch of the bilateral animals that have three germ layers, they're triploblastic, and we get to this another, another branch and we have to come to this question about body cavity. Well, let's take this short branch down the animals that are bilateral, three germ layers, but lack a body cavity, the acelomates. The phylum we're going to investigate is the phylum platyhelminthes, or the flatworms. Now just looking at this, we know there are some major evolutionary advances as we go down this line. First of all, we have three germ layers, which is going to allow for uh, tissue to make more complex systems. And we have a bilateral um, symmetry, which is also going to lead us towards maybe possibly having a head region. However, this is the branch of the acelomates, so they will lack a body cavity. That's one of the reasons why they're flat. There's no body cavity. So the flatworms. We have a bunch of different types and we're not going to have to get into the different classes but again three germ layers, bilateral symmetry and for the first time we have cephalization, a definite head region. And we have a cluster of nerves in that anterior region which we can loosely define as a brain. Well while these are advances we're still kind of primitive when it comes to digestive system because the flatworms have a incomplete system like the Nidarians, they have a gastrovascular cavity. It only has one opening, so two-way traffic. We'll look at some pictures in just a minute. All gas exchange is taking place across the skin, and there is no circulatory system. But when we look at the picture, we see that we don't need that. Uh, in this picture, all this dark area that you see in here, and I'll grab a different one, all this dark area, that is part of that gastrovascular cavity. You can see how highly branched it is. So when the food comes in and gets spread out across all these branches, there's no place in the body of this flatworm that's very far from that digestive tract. So you don't need a delivery system like a circulatory system to deliver the food. The gastrovascular cavity does both digest and delivers. We can see a cluster of neurons in the head region that we call a brain and two lateral main nerve cords that make up the nervous system. We see a pretty obvious bilateral symmetry that you could divide this animal right down the middle and to make two mirrored halves. And we see a distinct uh, head region, cephalized. So now let's move down this branch where we have a body cavity. But we have to ask ourselves what type of body cavity. And we need to remind ourselves of a picture we looked at in the introductory video, which is the different types of body cavities. Obviously the acelomates lacking the pseudocelomates having a body cavity but not surrounded on all sides by mesoderm 
versus a true coelomate. We're going to head down the coelomate branch first. And there's two types of organisms that we talk about down this branch, but we're going to focus in on one of them. We have the rotifers and the nematodes. We'll focus on the nematodes, otherwise known as the roundworms. When we get to the roundworms or the nematodes, the first thing we see is that for the first time, yes, we have a body cavity. And while it's not a true salome, there is space for more complex internal organs. The other big major advancement that we see stepping forward here is that we have our first complete digestive system. So that when food comes into this animal in the front, it travels the whole way through and there is an exit. So we have one-way traffic. We have a complete digestive system for the first time. We still do not have a circulatory system and we do not have any gas exchange system. All that still occurs by diffusion. But we have made some very significant evolutionary steps. And now we're ready to head down the branch of the coelomates. These are the more complex animals with a true body cavity surrounded on all sides by mesoderm. And we know that there is a major divergence among these animals based on the animal development that we saw in our last video. We know that the blastopore, the entrance to the primitive gut is either going to develop into the mouth for a protostome or a first mouth or that first opening will develop into the anus and the second opening in the mouth thus deuterostomes or second mouth. Now in this video we're going to head down the protostome branch and just look at one of these groups and the rest of this we'll leave to our next set of videos. We're going to discuss annelids or the segmented worms. For the segment of worms, we're going to use earthworms as kind of the poster child for this whole group. Uh, the, the earthworms are in the class Oligochaete, uh, the phylum name is annelid. We call these the segmented worms. And if you look at the picture, it's pretty obvious to see why we would call them uh, segmented worms. You can see very distinctive segmentation. Then, like we know, uh, this is our first of our coelomates, so a big evolutionary step forward is that we have, for the first time, a true salome a body cavity surrounded on all sides by mesoderm, which allows for room for complex internal organs. We have this definitive segmentation. We have a more complex musculature and a, and a brain to coordinate it, and a more advanced, uh, kind of complicated, more complex digestive system with some different structures in there that we'll talk more about in class. But besides the salome and the segmentation, the other big step forward that I want to talk about is the closed circulatory system. For the first time we have a circulatory system, and not just having one, we have a fairly complex one, a closed system with blood that's pumped through vessels with five pairs of hearts. And for the first time, we have a structure that we're going to identify as a uh, excretion organ to remove nitrogenous waste and excess water, the corollary uh, to what we have as our kidneys. The earthworm has a structure called nephridia. So if we look at this drawing, this cross section, we can see the complexity of the earthworm. We can see the circulatory system with its vessels and five uh, pairs of heart tier. We see the brain and the ventral nerve cord, which is uh, interesting because we have a dorsal nerve cord. And you see these green structures, these tubules to remove the nitrogenous, nitrogenous waste, the uh, metabolic waste, which is the corollary of our kidneys, the nephridia. There are a couple other interesting structural things that we'll get into more detail in class, especially the shape of this digestive tube as it's folded in here. It's a form relates to function issue, and we'll talk about that in class, the increasing surface area. Other segmented worms are leeches and marine worms. But before we finish, I want to talk about a couple short things. Um, when we talk about circulatory systems, we know that circulatory systems are used to transport materials through a large body efficiently. And without a circulatory system, we rely on diffusion alone to move those materials. And so we see that we had animals that had no circulatory system, and now with the earthworms we have a closed circulatory system. But we're also, in the near future, going to talk about some animals with incomplete or open circulatory system, where they may have a heart and with no or limited open-ended blood vessels. So we'll talk about how that works and what that means for different animals. So what I would do if I were you to review would I would maybe make a chart like this to compare and contrast the three different types of worms, the flatworms, the roundworms, and the segmented worms on these different uh, scales to just to kind of see a step-by-step a -step, uh, movement forward in, from evolutionary terms. But also go back through the video and look for those evolutionarily significant issues. 
and do this for all the animals starting at sponges and moving up. Make sure you can point out where the big advancements are. Work on your note packet, fill in some of the details here, and um, we'll see you in class.